Question is from Sean and Bolt 84. What are some easy ways to spot a bad personal trainer? Mm. I'll tell you an easy one. Eating on the floor. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. They're, they're wearing believe- a CrossFit shirt. How funny. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. <laughs> the dick. I mean, that's a big one. You know what, dude? It's funny you have to say that, Adam, but yeah. Eating on the freaking floor. It's so floor. common, dude. I it's see stupid. it all the time, and it like just drives me. You ever fire a trainer for that? Bro, 100%. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that was like a no. I, I get mad at the coffee cups. Like, and, and that was a pushback I used to get from trainers. Like, I'm like, it just looks fucking lazy. I'm all poured in a sport cup. I'm all, so it looks like a water that you're drinking. I don't, I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't drink on the floor because I get you need to be hydrated, but drinking a fucking Starbucks coffee while you're leaning against the machine while, while she's doing reps is just a fucking bad look. Dude, I had a mm. trainer who was eating potato chips while training, <laughs> while training a client that's, that's on awesome. the workout floor. <laughs> just crumbling. Then when I bring him aside and ask him, I'm like, what are you doing, bro? You're eating potato oh, chips man. on the fuck. And you know what he says to me? He goes, bro, I got a six pack. I know what my calories and my macros are. Like, I don't give a fuck what you look like. Yeah. You're training a client who's trying to lose weight and you're eating potato chips oh, while they're man. doing I used, to get, I used to get into onto them too. Slap it out of his hand. My trainers that would come in because we had, you know, you have, we had a break room, right? Uh, and you know, fucking go to McDonald's or Taco Bell. Hide the throw the shit outside. I know. And then they come in. I'm like, listen, I'm not gonna tell you what you can and can't eat. Everyone teaches their own. But come on, man. You know. And they would say the same thing too. Hey, man, I know my macros. Look at my abs. Look how great I look. I'm like, yeah, but it's not. It's what your the message you're sending to everybody else. Yeah. And not only that, I can you bring in that smell when you come in. I'm like McDonald's French fries smell amazing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Clients working out hard. Oh, I yeah. can smell French fries. Oh, yeah. that's I know what I'm doing yeah. after this. What are you doing? That's so a yeah. psychological phenomenon. As so, you get hard, as you get tired, you start to smell the foods. That so that's your first thing is yeah, if they're yeah. if they're drinking or eating on the floor. I think that's yeah. just. A, the, I'll tell you an easy one. Um, are, if is the trainer doing plyometrics with the client and having them get super tired doing the plyos? Mm. That's a bad trainer. Mm-hmm. So the the jump boxes is part of a circuit uh, or any kind of exercise that's explosive, but that's not treated as an explosive movement, but rather as a fatigue building movement that is a bad trainer and unfortunately you see that quite common yeah no i mean if they're always like constantly kind of being their cheerleader is like push through it push through it like uh, the intensity is always being highlighted all the time uh yes i'm steer clear of that for sure well that one could be a little bit harder the one that you guys just named right now because if you have the right athlete with good mechanics and there's a there's a there's a there's a purpose for their application of that that's hard but you yeah, you, you, to, you know what I'm athlete. talking about. Oh no, hundred yeah. percent. And and I think that it, a, a regular person coming to the gym may not have a trained eye to see the the poor mechanics. Now a trainer will a trainer will know another bad trainer who's doing this. That's got the jump box. They've got the jump rope. They've got the you know sh- overhead press or th- squat thrusters, and they're running through the circuit. And you can see when she's doing the jump box, her knees are caving in. You know, she, her, she's thumping down on the ground every time she does it. Like her back's all rounded, like bad posture, bad form, but yet still getting pushed through a circuit. Like that's a really bad trainer. Uh, I mean, but you, I, if you see like someone doing something explosive and in a circuit, but they look like a, they look like a gazelle and they have great form and they look like an athlete, there could be an application for what they're doing. I think it's the you know the overweight middle aged male or female client that doesn't look like your athlete, and that's usually who's doing that. Right, shit. right. So that to me, I think you have to make that distinction. Yeah, case by case, yeah, for yeah. sure. With that, I, th- I I think a trainer, if you you can watch trainers train their clients, and are they paying attention, close attention to their client? Right. Um, so are they walking around the client while the client's mm. performing the exercise? Are they careful to spot the client? Um, so that if, if something happens, they're there to catch the weight uh, or catch their clients so they don't fall. Are they watching them head to toe? Are they critiquing their form? I mean, really, that's the value of a trainer. The true value of a trainer is the application, the proper application of exercise. From an exercise standpoint, I should say, because there's a lot of value to a trainer that has nothing to do with exercise. Right. But from the workout standpoint, is the trainer really paying attention to the form, oh, tuck your elbows, tighten up, lift here, control your rep. You know, walking around like you can tell when somebody's. Oh, if you're a really intent. good, if you're a really good trainer, to me, I feel like I'll see you during your your client will be doing a set of something. It could be anything, right? And while the client is is doing the reps, the trainer is constantly moving, checking all, checking checking from the side, checking from behind, checking in front, maybe even talking, giving little feedback. You know, open up, slow down, head up. Like mm-hmm. they're giving these cues while they're going through. And then when they're done with the set. 
you'll see the trainer normally get in and actually perform it and show the example of whatever he or she was speaking to during that rep. Like, you know, notice how your elbows were rocking like this. I want you to retract like this and hold back. And they're demonstrating it again. Like they're showing the movement they just did. They're showing it with better form. They're critiquing it. Then they're putting them back in and doing it. Like there should be a lot of movement and engagement mm -hmm. happening between a trainer and a client if you have a really good trainer. Yeah, I think, I mean, if you want to boil it down to two main attributes is how much, if you can tell that they really, really sincerely care and they're paying a lot of close attention and they're communicating well uh, with their client. I mean, those things are, you know, paramount to make a good trainer. You know, the rest of it, you can kind of tell on your own if like their experience level because i know i sucked in the very beginning like i was doing some shit wrong and wasn't like too aware but i definitely cared deeply about like you know getting better and then also helping my client get to where they want to get you can also watch the clients do the clients look like they're enjoying their workout and i know a lot of people thinking are thinking oh i mean enjoy a workout it's supposed to be hard and whatever yeah you can still see if somebody enjoys the workout or if they don't now why is that important well, you're planning if you're planning on hire tra hiring a trainer, it's probably because you want to establish a good practice, a good relationship with exercise. And if you don't enjoy your workout sessions, if you're dreading them because your trainer is whatever, mean, boring, whatever, um, you're not going to have a good start. So watch the client. Does the client look like they're enjoying their session? Does it look like they respect the trainer? And then the presentation of the trainer. This is a big one. I don't have to say this. I don't think I don't really think I have to say this, but if the trainers look sloppy, like they're not really taking their job seriously, because can you see this sometimes with trainers? They're probably not going to take the actual training portion seriously. So I like the trainer that looks like they got dressed for the job. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like shirt tucked in, nice looking, you know, clean clothes, you know, ready to train their client, hair combed. Does that directly, you know, uh, communicate to the training skill and all stuff? No, but it does tell you that they kind of took it seriously. Yeah, it's just professionalism. You know I mean? exactly. Any other job, how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm.